it's open until five o'clock. I think we have a little time to kill. Just a silly question, uh, the, the museum is named after anyone? Museum is, um, so this portion that we're standing in right now is the mm -hmm. original house of the Arnott family. Oh, gotcha. Um, Matthias Arnott uh, was the son of John Arnott, and he was an art collector. Um, these paintings here in the permanent collection, he traveled to Europe to acquire oh, wow. their like 16th, 17th, 18th century works. Um, so this is his house, and then he, when he passed away, he gifted the museum and his collection to the city of Elmira. Very um, nice. So then we became a museum, and eventually we added on the West Wing, where we can hold our contemporary shows. So this is the home of the of Mr. Arnott, who lived in this mansion. I honestly I haven't done enough research, but wow. This is beautiful. Just don't touch any of the artwork. So we're going kind of fast, but we really just pulled into them. Yes, Eric, I'm going to see everything. What's up, buddy? Yeah, can I just take a look? What's up? Okay, I see Eric. This is beautiful. Come on, Logan. Wow, I love how the color just pops at you. It looks so real, incredible. Look at this painting. Looks like a photograph. Wow, the colors, the detail, the depth. Very impressive. Eric, which one is your favorite painting here? Show me. This is your favorite? Because the kids are playing? Yeah, okay, don't touch. That's You're being silly. Yeah, that's Very pretty artwork. All right, let's go this way. And you know not to touch anything. You cannot touch this. Just telling you, buddy. Ching. You cannot touch any of the artwork. Wow, very pretty. Asian art. Look at this. I think it's bronze. I'm not sure. Wow. Look at this bell. It's incredible the detail please stand up eric eric please stand up you can go sit over there yeah and this is watercolors in this gallery okay okay Let's see what pops out. This is kind of popping out for me. By Barbara Kurkoba. Dill, Dilly, huh? Nicely done, oil on canvas. Some body sculptures. Mm -hmm. 
Eric is a little bored. <laughs> Sometimes kids in museums don't mix, it depends, I guess. When he gets a little older, he will appreciate things a little better. I guess he feels, a, yeah. Okay, okay. Across the street is the Chemung County Courthouse Complex. Um, consists of four buildings which were built between 1836 and 1899. The oldest building built in 1836 is the DA building and treasurer's building. The centerpiece, the courthouse itself was designed by um, Horatio Nelson White and um, and it was built between 1861 and 1862 uh, these were followed by the uh, county's clerk's office in 1875 that's that building over there um, and the addition of the courthouse uh, annex in 1895 the complex was added to the national register of historic places back in 1971 so we're going to take a quick look a closer look at these historic gems here in elmira new york It's a Saturday, so government buildings are closed. Closed for the weekend. This is the family court house. Very nice looking building. There's the clerk's office. Must be very pretty inside. At least I suppose it is. There you go. And we are on Mar Market Street and Lake Street intersection. You can see how quiet the city is right now. No cars. So we're going to carry on and explore Elmira. Lake Street Bridge. Elmira's first bridge. Alright. Let's check it out. Very pretty. Fast moving water. You can see the mountain range in the background. So, Michelle and I, we are freezing our rears off to do this walkthrough and uh, I'm okay with that because it's January and the grass is green there's no snow on the ground and don't have to deal with crowds so just got to deal with a little cold and wind all right so we're gonna check out the Chemung County Historical Society Museum I believe they're still open and it is freezing we just went over that bridge and froze our tails off so we're looking for stuff to do inside 
especially with Eric. <laughs> museum entrance. All right, let's check it out. We are now inside the museum. This is what they used to wear, the ladies, back in the 1800s. Wow, that's an actual duck on her hat, or, or is that a pheasant? Michelle, would you wear this hat today? If I gave you 500 bucks to go to the mall? <laughs> that's awesome. I actually want to hear her response. Poor sanitation. Okay. Did you ask me if I would wear this? I uh, no, that right there. That hat. Uh, the hat with the pheasant on it. It's a oh. dead bird, like just chilling. Um, I can't say that I would. To the this mall. Whole like, head is on just, there. The entire bird is on. Yeah. It, it's hey back in the day that used to be the style so this was uh an instrument i believe official it was that ten, number 10. number 10. instruments were decorated with toxic paints and varnishes number eight is the very first monopoly no that's the Amusing Instructor is what this game's called. And this is the oldest board game that I've laid my eyes on. Invented by Joseph Beach of Elmira back in 1877. Jabriz. There's a microscope used in 1875. Ooh, th this kind of reminds me of that movie, The Nun, Michelle. This this uh, outfit here, this statue, kind of gives me the EGBGs. Death was the remains, simply a facet of life. In the Victorian era, death was a deeply personal occurrence as most family members died at home when mourning a relative, Victorians were expected to follow a set of social rules regarding how they should mourn in public. Oh, that's freaky. And this is what a Victorian home looked like. Here's one of the bedrooms. Here's another bedroom. Looks pretty lavishing. They're enjoying some music, sitting by the fire, a conversation. And there's two bedrooms. There's the Christmas tree. A couple of fireplaces, yeah. Nice Victorian home. Eric. This piano manufactured over a hundred years ago, 1911. Lead and versatile and soft metal. I'm sorry, lead is a versatile and soft metal. Many teapots and cups were made of pewter and alloy of tin, which contains lead and antimony. Lead was also a common ingredient in ceramic glazes and crystal glass. Highly acidic foods oxidize lead glazes, causing the poisonous metal to leach out of plates into food. Wow. Did not know that. Eric, you might want to check this room out. There's a cool fire truck here. Come here, the first fire truck. Okay, suit yourself. Skis. 
in this area. Folks would go snowshoeing and skiing, being that it snowed here for six months out of the year almost. We should take a picture of Eric by this fire truck, Michelle. I think it would be a nice photograph. They have made a couple of upgrades since. Picture photograph for Mark Twain. Gleason's Water Cure. Water Cure Office, 1880s. Wow, this photography is incredible. 1896, Baldwin Kolb's Saloon on Lake Street. And this is the Billiard Room Hotel, 1900. Inside the Langdon home. The Langdon's Twain's in laws lived at 303 North Main Street, uh, one of the finest homes in the city. It featured a self opening gate, two greenhouses, and an extensive garden. The family's wealth came from their involvement in the lumber and coal industries. Very nice, grandiose mirror. Park Church, the first independent congressional church where Park Church became a center of the progressive movement in Al Elmira back in 1846 when it broke with the first Presbyterian Church over the issue of slavery. Some old artifacts here. And this is what we read about. Oh. One second, Mark Twain's study at the Quarry Farm. We probably will stop and check it out. Mark Twain, right? Uh, yep, writing in his study, 1903. And. Quarry Farm, okay. Susan Crane, oh, Livy's sister, and her husband, Theodore, inherited the Legden family summer home, Quarry Farm, in 1870. For nearly 20 years, Twain and his family summered at the Quarry Farm. While at the Quarry Farm, Livy conducted lessons with her daughters, rested, read, and visited with family and friends. During the summer of 1874, Susan presented Twain with a study in the shape of a steamboat pilot's house. Freed from distraction, the study provided the setting for Twain to write many of his most famous work works. The Life of the Rich and Famous 100 plus years ago on the porch of the Quarry Farm, 1880s, and here we have Mark Twain and John Lewis, 1903. During the summer of 1877, John Lewis, a tenant farmer, saved the lives of Charles Langdon's wife, daughter, and nursemaid by stopping a runaway carriage. Twain and Lewis developed a friendship, and Lewis served as one of the models for Jim in the Huckleberry Finn. 
Oh, cool. Dusk from the Lantham home. So early Native American settlement. Native Americans in, inhabited the Chemung Valley long before the arrival of European explorers and settlers. The Andesti and the Iroquoian speaking group had settlements along the Chemung and the Susquehanna rivers until they were pushed out by the Seneca and the Cayuga by the mid 1600s. By the 1750s, some Algonquin speaking groups relocated to the area after being forced from their homes by European settlers elsewhere in New York. Uh, these Algonquin groups sided with the French and attacked white settlements during the French and Indian War, which angered the British. In 1764, the British and their Iroquois allies burned Algonquin villages and took the land forcing them west. And there's some artifacts, Native American artifacts. Look at that. Um, shoes that they wore. Different weaponry. Early settlement. Approximately five years after the Battle of Newton and the Sullivan-Clinton campaign in 1779, permanent white settlement of the Chimong Valley increased. By 1785, there were settlements from Tioga Point to Painted Post. John Brees settled in Horseheads in 1787. Colonel John Handy came to what is now Elmira in 1788. Early settlers faced many hardships Threats to their survival included attacks from Native Americans, starvation due to crop failures, or harsh winters. Despite these difficulties, settlements continued to expand, and in 1792, the village of Newtown, now Elmira, was founded. And here is Elmira from East Hill, taken in 1862, guys. 1862.
So we are checking out Mark Twain's resting place here at the Woodlawn Cemetery. Mark Twain's body being removed from his home at Reading for burial in New York. There's a photograph. It's cold. Yes, it is. This is it, guys. Mark Twain's resting place. Let's see what it says at the bottom here. It says, Death is the starlet. I can't really read that. Death is the starlet strip between the companionship of yesterday and the reunion of tomorrow to the loving family of my father and my husband. And we had to stop by here. Check out the site. All right, so we just pulled up to Elmira College. Okie doke, so here is the Elmira College campus. What a beautiful, beautiful uh, campus indeed. Love the green space. And up ahead is Mark Twain's study that we read about at the History Museum. I gotta tell you, that wind is icy. That's exactly why not a single soul is out and about. Because it's a, it doesn't look bad, but boy, 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 it's cold outside. That wind is brutal. Let's check it out. This is where he wrote some of his finest works. Mark Twain study. There you go. Open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. 10 to 4. But it doesn't need to be open. You can just see right through the window everything that you need to see. Nice, very nice. So the study was built in 1874, given to Elmira College back in 1952. Might as well check out the campus. Beautiful house across the street. Admissions, okay. That's Tompkins Hole. Ooh, cold, cold, cold. So Elmira, 
boasts a pretty rich history uh, that unfolds through the centuries, revealing a tapestry woven with significant events, notable figures, and a deep connection to the evolution of the United States. Uh, origins of Elmira trace back to the late 18th century when European settlers began establishing a community on lands originally inhabited by the in by the Native Americans um, however it was the mid 19th century that uh, marked a transformative period for Elmira the city's uh, strategic location along the river that we had seen earlier, the Chimang River, and its proximity to major transportation routes, uh, it made it a pivotal hub for trade and commerce alike. And one of the defining moments in Elmira's history occurred when the arrival of the Erie Railroad back in 1850s the transportation artery not only facilitated the movement of goods and people but also solidified Elmira's position as a key railway center and then of course the city's growth surged as industries flourished uh, leveraging the efficient transportation network provided by the railroad And of course, in the 19th century, um, further development of Elmira was marked by the establishment of the educational institutions such as right here, Elmira College. The city's commitment to education laid the groundwork for uh, intellectual and cultural enrichment, which uh, shaped Elmira into the community that valued learning and progress. And Mark Twain did spend several significant years in Elmira and he did write some of his most famous works including The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Adventures of Huckleberry Finn while residing in the city. And we got to see the study where he had written those iconic pieces. And of course in the 20th century the city became an industrial center with manufacturing playing a key role in its economic development and Elmira's diverse economic landscape coupled with its commitment to preserving historical landmarks ensured a balance between progress and heritage. Yeah, this, this is definitely a very, very presentable campus seeing the old buildings and the new buildings standing side by side. The city was incorporated back in 1864 and uh, the area is approximately 7.58 square miles and it's located at, at the south central part of the county. Some of the major employers in Elmira are not health, number one, number two is Hardinge manufacturer. Also, uh, number three is Chimung County. Four is GST Boses. Five is Elmira College. Six is Chimung Canal Trust. Seven is Elmira City School District. And eight is Capabilities. some of their big employers. Um, some of their 
attractions here in uh, Elmira. We have the Eldridge Park, uh, the National Soaring Museum, as well as Woodlawn Cemetery of Elmira, where uh, the final resting place of Mark Twain. The Arnott Art Museum, which we did visit. And the History Museum, the Chimang Valley History Museum. You can also check out the Harris Hill Soaring Corporation. The Woodlawn National Cemetery. Number eight is the Tanglewood Nature Center Museum. Number nine is John W. Jones Museum. And number 10, Mark Twain's grave. Some of their top points of interest. They also recommend checking out Mark Twain's summer home as well as uh, other things to do such as Upstate Brew Brewing Company. But there's lots of restaurants. If you're interested in watching a little hockey, you would check out the first arena. It was bugging me not knowing the name of their hockey team. So I had to pause the recording and look it up. It's the Elmira Impact. That's the name of their hockey team. Uh, hockey is always one of my favorite sports. I do enjoy it. So I would love to check them out in action. <clears throat> Once again, I'm the only one outside. Uh, it's freezing. Look at that building, it looks like a castle. That distinguished castle top features. And we are on Washington Street. About to wrap up this little video of Elmira, New York. And I move on to the next adventure. So until next time, coming to you from Elmira, New York. God bless. Good luck. See you later. And to our left is one of two prisons here in Elmira, New York, up and up atop of that hill.